October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. With breast cancer being the most common cancer in women worldwide and the second most common cancer overall, I believe it is important to be informed about this devastating disease which has affected so many women and even men. So in this video, I will answer 10 common questions about breast cancer, which I'm sure many of you may have asked yourself before. Now the first question is, what exactly is breast cancer? It is medically known as breast carcinoma, which means that there is uncontrolled cellular growth in the breast tissue. To understand how breast cancer develops, it is important to first understand the tissues that make up the breast. The breast is composed of three types of tissue. The glandular tissue which consists of the milk producing lobules and are commonly known as the mammary glands. The second tissue is the stroma made of fatty tissues, so this is the adipose tissue. And then the lymphatic vessels where ducts will drain lymph into the nodes of the armpits. Breast cancer primarily affects the glandular tissue to start with. This tissue is composed of cells with special hormone receptors for the common female hormones estrogen, progesterone, and prolactin. It is these hormones which are responsible for promoting cellular growth of alveolar cells found in the milk lobules of the breast, which leads to enlargement of these lobules. So if these alveolar cells undergo genetic mutations during cell division, this can lead to the formation of tumors. Normally, mutated cells may be programmed to die, but if that fails to occur, the tumors form as the cells continue to grow uncontrollably. So this is the basis of any cancer development, regardless of location in the body. So here we can see how the cancer starts in the breast. So the next common question asks is, what can cause breast cancer? There are numerous risk factors that can increase your chances of developing breast cancer. But being a female is obviously the major risk factor. But that doesn't mean that men aren't prone to get breast cancer. Statistics show that 1 out of 8 women develop breast cancer compared to 1 out of 100 men. So it is much more rare in men than women, which is understandable since women have much more breast tissue and milk producing glands that men don't have. Other factors include increasing age, having a family history of breast cancer in which the breast cancer gene mutations BRCA1 or 2 can actually be inherited. In fact, studies have shown that 5-10% to of breast cancer cases are linked to family history. Being overweight is also another risk factor and if you have started your period early or experienced late menopause, your risk is higher than those late bloomers because of the increased number of menstrual cycles and therefore hormone production. Women who have not been pregnant or have been using hormonal birth control for many years are also at greater risk. And finally, overuse of alcohol and cigarette smoking and exposure to radiation can also increase your chances of developing breast cancer. Now, there have been so many myths and persistent rumors circulating the internet about certain factors that can cause breast cancer. And honestly, many of us have probably believed these things due to ignorance. Here are six common myths about risk factors leading to breast cancer. Consuming too much sugar. We've always heard that sugar feeds the cancer cells, which is somewhat true, just like it feeds all other cells in the body, but it doesn't necessarily cause cancer. Too much sugar may lead to weight gain, which is an established risk factor as mentioned before, but it doesn't necessarily cause cancer. Secondly, using antiperspirants. They do not cause breast cancer. Many people have believed that these stop sweating and therefore the removal of toxins from the body, so as a result can lead to clogged glands. Another major concern has been the use of the aluminum-based antiperspirants, which many believe that these chemicals are absorbed into the lymph nodes and can increase the risk of breast cancer. But there is no evidence to prove this is true. Thirdly, wearing underwire bras were also thought to restrict lymphatic fluid circulation out of the breast and lead to toxin buildup in the tissue. But this is not true since no evidence is there to support this. Fourthly, getting a mammogram exposes you to very little radiation that is very unlikely to cause any harm to the breast or initiate cancer development. This has often put fear into women and stopped them from going to get their annual mammogram. Mammograms do not cause breast cancer. 
Fifthly, having fibrocystic breasts is very common in women. It's a condition where there is a non-cancerous movable lump or cyst in the breast that can be tender when touched and may produce some discomfort. And in fact, 50% of women have this condition, but that does not put them at any greater risk of breast cancer. And then injury to the breast may also cause discomfort, but it does not necessarily cause cells to rapidly grow out of control to form breast cancer. So over the years of medical research and little evidence presented, health professionals have tried to dispel these myths. So it's important that we don't believe every word out there about what causes breast cancer. Do your proper research and consult your doctor for more information. So what are the main signs and symptoms to look for when checking your breasts? Common symptoms include hard, painless, immobile lumps, swelling under the armpit, dimpling of the skin of the breast, which actually produces an orange peel effect, retraction of the nipples, that is the inward turning of the nipples, and then itching, redness, crusting, and nipple discharge, which are common signs of Paget disease of the breast. So if you have noticed any of these signs or experienced any of these symptoms, it is important to consult your doctor as soon as possible. You don't want to ignore these signs and pretend that everything is fine, and neither do you want to jump to conclusions. Having a doctor examine you and then diagnose you is necessary. So how exactly is breast cancer diagnosed? When you consult your doctor with concerns about your breasts, the first thing that's done is a basic breast examination, where the doctor would observe, press, and feel the breast tissue for any unusual signs or lumps. If the doctor finds a hard lump and suspects that there is need for further examination, you may be advised to get some form of screening done via imaging services such as a mammogram, ultrasound, or MRI, which is magnetic resonance imaging. Additionally, there may be need for a biopsy of the lump found in the breast where a needle is used to remove the tissue and fluid from the lump and then examine under the microscope to see if the cells are cancerous and then give an official diagnosis. So if you experience any symptoms mentioned before, it is best to consult your doctor because early detection is so crucial in the fight against breast cancer, which can develop to different stages. So that brings us to the next question. What are the stages of breast cancer? Breast cancer is classified based on the point of origin of the cancer and the extent to which it has spread in the breast and the rest of the body. So there are four stages of breast cancer. At stage zero, abnormal cells are found only in the milk ducts of breasts, not surrounding breast tissue, so it's non-invasive. At stage one to two, the lump found may be smaller than 5 cm and have not spread to more than 3 lymph nodes. Stages 2 to 3, lumps larger than 5 cm and have spread to nearby tissues such as the skin, the chest muscle, and more than 3 lymph nodes. And then when it has reached stage 4, the cancer has spread to other parts of the body, which is known as metastasis. And depending on the stage of breast cancer, the affected individual may experience certain complications. So what are these complications associated with breast cancer? So the complications associated with breast cancer are closely linked to each stage mentioned earlier. Untreated breast cancer may often lead to inflammation, which is one of the main complications. And this causes redness, pain, and damaged tissue and can actually result in fibrosis which is the thickening or increased density of the breast tissue with scarring. So this is usually evident by the firm or rubbery bumps felt in the breast, and it should not be confused with a breast infection, which is more common cause of redness and swelling. So as the breast cancer grows, the cells can invade other tissue of the breast and surrounding areas, such as the chest muscle and the skin. So then as the cancer worsens, it enters and blocks the lymphatic vessels and then finally spreads outside the breast tissue through the blood and the lymph to other organs and this can lead to an increased risk of death as these vital organs such as the lungs, the liver and the brain are affected. So that is why it's so important to ensure that once diagnosed with breast cancer you seek medical treatment to effectively combat the growth of the cancer in the breast. So what are the treatment options for breast cancer? Your doctor would advise you on the appropriate method of treatment based on the size, type, and stage of breast cancer. 
but the most common forms of treatment include surgery which involves targeting and removing the lump from the breast tissue or in worst cases the entire removal of the breast which is known as mastectomy. Radiation therapy uses radiation to destroy cancer cells while chemotherapy uses strong chemicals to kill the cancer tumors. Hormonal therapy is another option recommended where the patient takes medication usually to block the formation or the effects of the hormone estrogen. So once the affected individual has undergone their treatment, it is possible for them to recover from breast cancer. So what are the chances of survival after treatment? Surviving breast cancer really depends on if the cancer was detected and treated early, plus the actual type and stage of the breast cancer. So you would expect that the chances of survival would decrease with increasing stage of the cancer. So a major concern is how can breast cancer be prevented? Can it be prevented? There are numerous factors that can help you to reduce the risk of developing breast cancer, but none of these are guaranteed to give you total immunity against it. These include getting screened annually, performing regular breast exams, having a balanced diet, exercising regularly, as well as maintaining a healthy weight, and of course, you need to stop smoking and reduce the alcohol consumption. So there have been some studies that suggest certain foods can actually help reduce the risk of cancer. And these include soursop, broccoli, turmeric, garlic and onion, and green tea. So consuming a rich amount of these foods have been shown to reduce cancer growth or even kill the cancer cells. And soursop in particular has been named as a superfood in healing cancer since it has actually been proven to be many times more effective than chemotherapy. So with this non-natural healer of cancer, does this mean that cancer can be fully cured? Well, to be honest, curing cancer is certainly not an easy task to do. With so many years of intensive research, medical professionals have fought to find the cure for cancer, but currently the closest thing to a cure is complete remission. So that is when there are no detectable signs of cancer in the body. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the cancer cells cannot come back. Researchers have implemented various trials such as immunotherapy in efforts to get the immune system to be able to fight off cancer cells. But technically cancer cells are not foreign material to the body, like how vaccines can be used to combat infectious diseases. We can only live in hope that someday soon, our prayers will be answered and that there will be a true cure for cancer. If you or a relative have been affected by breast cancer, feel free to share your story below to support, inspire and bring hope to others who are dealing with this disease. We are all in this fight together. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, like and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.